Welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome back. Um, I am going to be taking you guys with me today on a day in my life. Um, it is a Thursday, it's not a very exciting day particularly, in the sense of we're not like going somewhere or anything like that, but we are working the horses at home and I'm going to take you with me and introduce you to some new faces maybe and also uh, show you a bit what we're doing with all of my guys. So yeah, so there's a lot going on, we've got a lot of horses in work at the moment, we've got 15 in work which is a lot, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, I've obviously got Meg who works the horses with me so that's great um, and then I've got girls in the yard so I'm not on my own. I'm just wandering around the arena looking lost because I'm trying to multitask. We're going to be jumping some of the horses today. So we've got some young horses that have progressed to the point of jumping fences, which is really cool. Um, obviously, you saw Clara. She's actually having a holiday now. She's out over the road, so she won't feature in today's video. But we're going to be jumping Belle, little horse that I have in for long-term training. And uh, Dee Dee, who is now at the point of maybe jumping some little jumps. We did it once. Um already so she has done some but not loads uh so we're going to be doing that today which is really nice so yeah so i'm going to take you with me um for our day and i'm going to update you on horses so like zora for example she is back in work a little bit now so zora my main girl um the bay mare with a big white face she uh is turning seven this year it's a seven year old year be seven in June she unfortunately suffered a broken splint bone earlier on in the year and she has been on box rest for a really really long time three months um, and so we are now just slowly bringing her back into work um, we are starting by walking um, so unfortunately the splint bone didn't do what it was meant to do splint bones are very easy to break they she got kicked in the field actually was trying to integrate a new horse into their group and I failed and because she kicked her and the other horse was not ready and it was too soon and it was it was my fault I can't deny that so what we are going to do is we've started walking again because the bone hasn't actually glued itself back together again, um, which is really unfortunate. It was meant to have stuck itself back to the other bit and it hasn't. Um, so we're gonna start walking her in the hope that the tissue surrounding the splint bone has just stuck itself back together again. But it's an interesting journey with Zora because she is, uh, she's changed shape a lot since she's been on rest. She's very fat and her body is not a good shape. So we're gonna be talking about rehab and that kind of thing um, as an ongoing situation through the next few YouTube videos, I think. But yeah, so we're gonna start by walking. We're giving her some settling because she's really fresh because she's been on box rest and we can't like exercise her. We can just hand walk her. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm gonna take you with me on my day. I need to set these jumps up. Okay, so here we have our setup. So we'll have a little fence there and a little fence there and then we've got this through here so we've got this cavaletti one stride from that one and then we've got a set of bounces through the middle here so we've got some older horses jumping as well today so meg will jump boots her gelding who's older i can't remember how old he is maybe 12 now um and then Belle is jumping and so she will do the slightly more complicated stuff and then we have the babies that won't be doing the complicated stuff like Dee Dee will just trot over a cross pole kind of vibes but it's nice to have a little setup for all of them and it also means that it gets the younger horses used to having a little bit more in the arena um so yeah that's the general plan with the jumping today so before I get out of the car and start my day, I need to mention that I am now a brand ambassador, very proudly, of Westgate Laboratories. Westgate Laboratories offer a worm egg counting service. What this allows us to is allows us to do is not overworm our horses. It's a really, really important topic. When we worm egg count, we can learn which of our horses on our you know, in our care or our own horses or those of the liveries that we look after, we can learn what their worm burden is, whether they have a worm burden, whether the egg count is very low, very high, and this allows us to worm 
specific horses rather than a blanket approach this is really really important in the uk at the moment we have a bit of an epidemic of a nearly wormer resistant population of horses so what that allow what that means is horses are becoming less affected by the chemicals that we use there's only a few chemicals that we use in wormers in the uk and so it's really really important that we are not just blanket worming every horse that we come across but we are worm egg counting so we know that we are only targeting the horses with wormers that require it it's a very interesting thing to go through when you like do a worm egg count for the whole yard you will realize that actually maybe only two out of 14 horses would need worming now that is a much cheaper then to then be worming not everything and it is a very different much more scientific based approach to worming and looking after the horses so <clears throat> that's my piece on that if you see me talking about Westgate Labs, then please do support the content. It's very, very important that we get this message out. Um, go and head over to their website, check out, check them out. If you're UK based only, unfortunately, they can't, you can't ship droppings worldwide, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, but go and check them out. There's some really great information over there, even if you aren't based in the UK. But you can sign up to a monthly program where they will send you what you need when you need it throughout the year. And this can be a great support for us horse owners who are maybe a bit unsure about worming and what's best. So yeah, head over to their website here and find out more. So we have a few new faces around, including this one. How cute is he? This is Taz and he is a fell pony and he has come here for some missing education gaps. Um, he uh, is very good to hack, but not very good to go in the school. Don't get up on my behalf. That's Castor. He's three and he's come for some very baby education and then a little bit of learning how to have a rider somewhere nearby, but not doing very much. We've got Patsy, she is four this time, so she'll be doing a little bit of jumping today. She's already backed. We've got Shikari and Meg, say hi Meg. Um, <clears throat> Shikari is, uh, he's been here for a long time actually. He's a, been a rehab horse. He had um, hind suspensory problems, but we have been rehabilitating him very, very slowly. And um, yeah, he's doing good. And then we've got Raven. She's here to be re-backed. She had, was back before and it was a bit tense and that sort of thing. And then we've got Roscoe and you met Roscoe. He's the, I haven't really got ulcers, but I think I've got ulcers pony. Right, Amy, we're nearly good? Yeah. yeah? Let's leave the last few and just head over so um, we can get started working the horses. So <clears throat> the first horse that I'm gonna work is a horse called B. I'll do a little bit of voiceover on the video that I show you because there's also a tractor harrowing the field right next to the arena today. So um, it's gonna be a bit on the noisier side, which is annoying, but she suffers with really bad separation anxiety. So um, we are starting to work on that and help her not have such bad attachment issues to other horses. So B has very bad separation anxiety. I think it is partially hormone driven and I do discuss later on in this video how I help horses with hormone dysfunction. But the most thing, the, the biggest thing that we focused on in this session was her focus. So you can see she is permanently looking completely the other way. Despite there being another horse in the arena, she was not really finding that enough of a distraction. So what I'm doing to start with, and you can see there, she's really shouting. And what I don't do when she really shouts is tell her off or make life hard work for her. I'm just gently trying to walk a little bit backwards myself, asking her to walk a little bit forwards. The trouble that I have is she has no boundary of where she walks forward. So you can see here, I'm just creating a bit of awareness with my arms, a little bit of awareness with the rope. Now I do cut forward a long way to the end of this video because there's a lot of repetition and I mentioned later on that if you'd like to see the whole of this video you can do so on my Patreon page. Um, it's you know complex what I do and the explanation and it would you know it was a half an hour session so I can't put all of it in here. You see the way she moves her body is so fast. The licking and chewing is stress related. This isn't a, a good response you know here she is very very stressed but what I can't do when she is very very stressed is just 
leave her feeling stressed. Yeah, if I just left this horse in the field, she would not improve in her way in her body. So by using the groundwork, I can bring awareness to her body. I can bring some some semblance of calm to her body. And it's hard for her. She doesn't find it easy. But here you can see the steps are better. The body is a little bit slower. Still the tail is going and the neck is a little bit up. She's starting to understand to find the posture down. But it is a long process. And having you making this, you know, recording this voiceover, having had a week more sessions with her, the difference in her is enormous. And I will share the updated video on my patron page as well. So yeah, it's, it's a hard process with horses like this, their instinct to draw them back to other horses or to one other horse is incredibly strong. And it means that I have to be quite clear with what I'm saying to her, because like I said, if I just left her to her own devices, she would keep herself safe by obsessing over the other horse. And what I need her to do is I need her to become safe within herself. So you can see here all the way back up to her stable, bringing some awareness to the steps she's taking. And it, I have to just manage my expectations in this moment. She finds it incredibly difficult to go slowly at this point. I have to bring some awareness to the rope halter. And I'm not being strict. I'm not being strong on the rope halter. But her response to any amount of kind of distraction is quite big. You know, she did a lot of shouting in this session. You'll be glad to be grateful that I haven't left the sound on. But it was a really positive session and she was able to go back from the arena in a better way than she went to it. But it's still incredibly difficult for her to find any semblance of kind of calm or sense she has to have the other horse to make her feel safe at the moment I am not good enough I do become good enough as the week went on but on this day me and my questions are very hard for her to hear she's an extreme horse she has very extreme responses and reactions and it takes a lot of concentration and um, if you want to see that whole session then you can do so over on my Patreon. Um, I'll just show you clips today but yeah we did get to a much better place. Um, she really finds being without the horse who she attached herself to who is her neighbour in the stable she finds other than her, you know no other horse seems to do the trick very interesting it's uh yeah not easy not easy with a horse like that and as you can see it's very very extreme and she has these very big reactions and it's hard to get through to her you've got to be quite noisy yourself to start with so yeah that's definitely the hardest horse out of the day done we'll do some jumping now yeah Actually, we're not going to do some jumping now. We're going to do some hand walking. So uh, Zora is going to do her first hand walk of the day. I'm going to go and get her bridle. She's had a little bit of settling. She has a mill of settling. Um, otherwise, it is not safe and it's not good for her. So when she is recovering now, she's got a lot of energy as a horse. You know, she is a big spicy warm blood. So it is really important that I keep her safe, otherwise it is not a good thing. With that tractor going up and down in that field next door, it's very, very important. So um, yeah, she's already had that. She had that just before we did those last two horses. And so now we are going to do that. Meg is going to uh, ground with one of the young horses while I handwork Zora. And then I might have a little lean on that young horse because it's being here to be backed. So that's the plan next. So we're doing 20 minutes of walking twice a day at the moment and then she hand grazes as well in the middle of the day. Um, we're putting exercise bandages on her and then uh, 
and then the equine LTS. So this is where she was kicked. You can see she's got that little scar there. So it was actually an open fracture. So there's a bone that runs up here called the splint bone, and it still has a little gap in it here, very small, obviously. Um, and so we are putting the exercise bandages on to protect that. So these are the weather beta ones. They're, they're called Therapy Tech. So they have a tech, like a technology in them as such that encourages circulation. And then this part is nice and stretchy and protective. So it lay, allows the leg to still do what it needs to do, but with a certain amount of compression, which is important when we are recovering broken injuries. She was saying, I just said that she, she went really mad on Monday. She was like really fresh and not very settled. And um, it was, that was quite a good test because the leg was fine after. So this is Castor. He was the guy who was uh, having a lie down earlier. So he has been through the groundwork process. So he has really good understanding. You can see he has an approach to the mounting block. And then this is the first time I am moving his feet with me leaning on him uh, myself without having anybody help from the ground. So the day before Meg uh, moved his feet a little bit, he's been a bit unsure about having somebody above him. So mostly I do this totally myself, like you're seeing me do now. Sometimes if they have a little uncertainty, then we give them a person on the ground just to guide them a little bit. So you saw that he moved away at that moment. So I just went and re like repeated the process. You saw that time when I put my weight over him, he didn't move his feet at all. So what I'm asking here is for him to step back and away. This is the first groundwork pattern that they learn. So we always ask them to step their hind legs back and out from underneath them. And then from here, I'm just gently asking him if he can turn right. So I ask him to draw around to me. So he follows the rope. And then I'm asking with my voice just to ask him to follow. So this is the second groundwork pattern, the turning hind leg. Very good. And you see his response is to soften down, lick, chew and feel very soft. And as I say, this is the very first time that he is doing this with a person on board. And I was really, really pleased with him. He took some really lovely steps. There was absolutely no worry. This is how it should be when you're backing a horse. They shouldn't look afraid. You shouldn't have someone have to hold them to keep them still. They should make that choice themselves. So that is the first time I've done that without, because I did the same thing yesterday, but Meg guided him. So today that was really good. Good boy. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> right. Next. Jumping. Next is jumping. We have moved over to the vlogging camera because my phone's going to die, basically. It can't handle it. So, um, yeah, we've moved over to this. What are we doing? Sniffing my hat. So Blondie, I'll give you a little Blondie update while we're getting some tack out. Um, Blondie has been doing really well. That was nice, little ear lick. Blondie's been doing really well. Uh, she did come into season last, last week, week four, and it was really serious season. She couldn't really feel like she could do anything. But because we've been training her through positive reinforcement, I have actually been able to start doing some stuff with her more quickly than I previously have been able to. So that's been really great, and we've done some 
really good positive sessions in the arena now in the last couple of days. It's meant getting tack out, you know. It's meant getting tack. Yeah, she did have a tap on the hand the other minute ago. Okay. Hopefully she's gonna turn up with Bell's tack. Um so yes, we've been doing some target training and teaching her to move around the arena with me like following something, not being told to move from behind. It's very different how I'm training her now. It's a completely opposite complete opposite approach to what I have known up until this point, but it's really, really very interesting and I'm very grateful of the help I had from Hayley um, and I keep do like checking with her and saying, am I doing it right? So that's what we're doing Blondie. I'll show you a bit of what we're doing today when I do it with her. Um, I had a really great session with her a couple of days ago when I was with Holly Outridge and we got some amazing pictures. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Like getting Blondie following the target and then running with me. And I mean, she just hasn't willingly wanted to be with me like that before. So it feels really special. Right, next on the list is Belle. I've eaten a few little bits of chocolate. I need to eat a banana because I haven't actually eaten anything today. And I'm gonna eat my drink, my green juice. Um, people asked me what this was last time. It's AG1 called Athletic Greens. It's basically like a health food supplement, which has got all of your vitamins and minerals in it. Very, very good. Not very delicious. It's all right, I don't mind it now. I've kind of got used to it, but it's a bit of an acquired taste when you first get started, that's for sure. But it'd be great in a smoothie, that's definitely sure. Belarus, Belarus, let me do the fandango. So we're riding Belle at the moment in a riser pad at the front. So she had a little saddle, but it wasn't quite right. It was too wide. So what we have is we're waiting on her saddle to be made. But in the meantime, we're riding her in the Ectex front riser pad. And so what it is, I'll show you in a second, but it's just slightly thicker at the front than it is at the back. And what that does is it allows the it kind of like makes up for the little bit of space that the saddle is offering, but still allows for her body to develop the muscle it needs to develop through her shoulders and over her top line. It's a really clever bit of kit. I won't ride anything else now with Equitex. It's the only, the only saddle pad that I want to ride in. Can you get some boots for her, please, Amy? Yeah, on the wall. Um, so yeah, so really, uh, Really clever bit of equipment, one I'm very grateful for in my tack room because it allows me to keep helping the horses develop because she would have been in a situation where we didn't have a saddle for her, which is obviously very slow going. Yeah, yeah, put them on in. Um, so yeah, it's really good. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm just adjusting this bridle a little slightly. So you can see that it's thick and spongy here but it's slightly thinner and spongy there. So what that does is it allows for there to be, the saddle to be slightly wider here, but it doesn't change the fit at the back of the saddle where it still needs to be nice and wide for her. So this is a Harry Dab saddle. I'm very fortunate to be an ambassador for them. And what they have is they have, they have many different tree shapes. So what that does is it enables us to basically have the perfect saddle for all of these different horses with all of the different trees that they offer rather than feeling like oh you know we we have i have saddles and then the horses have a saddle that fits me but maybe not perfect for them so this tree shape is good for Belle. it's just slightly too wide so that's why we're riding in the riser pad um, and that enables her to still build her muscle um i think that's all i've got to say on riser pads so little Belle, she is a little bit of a complicated horse. She's had a bit of a tricky time in her life. She used to do a lot of standing on her back legs. She also had uh, trouble with her stifles. And so we've spent a very long time. She's been here since October. We've spent a long time working on her health, making sure she was happy from the inside. And now we're just starting to gently build things up. Took her out for a lesson the other day. And she was very good. You can hear see Meg having a lovely time with boots too. Um, but it's really cool to feel her starting to get a little bit stronger, find things easier, and just um, generally work up to getting fitter and stronger. She's eight, but she's not had the easiest time with her body. So I have taken it really, really slowly, made sure she was very strong in a straight line before we started adding any fences in. And now you can see she's having a lovely time. 
doing nice things, making nice shapes over fences. And yeah, she's a real pleasure to ride, actually. I'm very excited to be have the opportunity to ride her. She's with us long term, so stick around and you'll see a little bit more of Little Belle. Next up, Dee Dee. The sound was terrible on this clip, so I thought I'd just do a little voiceover. So this is Dee Dee's second ever time jumping. So as you can see, she is a big grown up these days. She turned four this week, so exciting. Um, as you can see, she is blossoming into the most wonderful little horse. I say little, she's actually quite big. So what I started with was just a pole. And actually, I will show you the process of how I build it up with another horse that I jump later on. So we just started with a pole on the floor and then we put one side of the pole up. And then we build a little cross pole. And as you can see, look, she started to canter over the fences, keeps taking me forward. I'm so proud of her. How cool is that? How cool is Dee Dee jump jump? Come look at me. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time, evidently, since I've vlogged anything with Dee Dee. And here she is, jumping jumps as a four year old. Why are we in the hedge? Why are four year olds so? I wasn't paying very much attention then. Dee put me in the hedge. I'm <laughs> uh, going to do something briefly with Blondie now. And then um, Meg and Lucy will get the next two ready that we're going to be riding. I've got another four-year-old to jump, Patsy, that I showed you earlier. Uh, this was Perry that Meg was riding. Um, he is actually going on loan as a therapy pony, which is really cool. He's came in on training livery um, to be got fit, basically. And so that's what we've been doing. And then he's gonna be a therapy pony. So he'll still be ridden, but he will also be used for the amazing work that a company, a uh, company, a charity, that I am an ambassador for. Uh, they're called Strength and Learning Through Horses. They do amazing things. They're based in Barnet near London and they do amazing things. Like really, they are, changing the game when it comes to therapy around horses for children in London and also um, for families. So yeah, have a check them out. They are on Instagram and Facebook and they're doing one. I will be sure to take you along and visit them one day. Um, I just haven't really got around to doing that yet, but I will be sure to do that when I get the opportunity and explain a bit more what they do. Hello, Betty. So this is Goodbye Flies. This is not in focus. That is a dog in my way. This is good. Uh, so we got shampoo and then it's a like a grooming product. So it's really, really good for mane and tail, but it's also very good for their skin and their coat. So you can use it all year round, essentially. Oh, my hair, God. So um, it smells so nice actually, it's like really herbal. It's all completely natural. There's no chemicals in it, nothing like that. So it's totally safe, you can put it everywhere on them. Um, it doesn't also leave them um, like slippery, like some silicon based grooming products. We really like it, I've used it for a really long time and just received a new order of it. So yeah, love it. And it's this madam's turn now, isn't it? So we do a lot of positive reinforcement training with Blondie now. So I have a bum bag and you all have seen that video. So this is now a progression of that. I won't show you everything, mainly because I've lost my cameraman, but I'll try and show you some little bits. I just prop my, my camera up and show you some little bits of what we're doing. But I mean, her willingness to go to the arena is like totally different. You know, she used to stop and start. Oh God, you okay? That's really interesting. Always hard when I video, I'm... Oh gosh, I don't think I've ever heard you shout like that. Everyone's fine, don't need to walk on top of me. I'm gonna concentrate. So Blondie has come down to the arena very high energy today. Haven't been very high energy like this in a long time. Maybe it's a bit windy. Obviously we have got B, the other horse who is, has been really setting everybody off. So I've got my enticement and my positive reinforcement, and we'll see if we can get Blondie to come to a slightly more sensible place. You see, she's looking pretty fantastic at the moment, moving really well. So this is my opportunity. So I flat wave my flag and as soon as she gives me an ear, I stop waving my flag. 
So in moments like this, what I don't do is try to control her. Maybe once upon a time I would have. But I'm taking a very different approach with her these days. And I like to be doing things loose with her. Good. So when she... So I'm just lifting this up. We watch for an ear. We take it away. And what I hope to do is be able to create some focus on me. Good. So what I've now done is I've made my target. And you can hear the horses are not good up there. There's somebody's very upset again. Good. And then I lose her. Well, it's okay. She's just going to have to manage my expectation of what I'm going to get from today. Because for some reason, everybody's very upset suddenly. Everyone's very, very settled. And now suddenly everybody is not very settled. So I, I'll present the, the good. It's hard to film. I, my cameraman is coming back, I hope. But every time when she wants to go, I let her go. What I'm not going to do today is make her be with me. This is really, really important. And this is nice that she's going and exploring all of the poles and jumps. She's coming back. So, as you can see, Blondie actually got to a place where she found that she could have a role, that she felt safe enough that she could get down on the ground and do something very vulnerable. I love that she rolls all the way over. It's always a good sign, isn't it? It means I haven't got a sore back, apparently. So she definitely was really unsettled on this day and I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to work her on her own actually because if I was to control her on this day I would have def definitely not had such a positive moment with her and it turned out to be such a cool session with her. So you saw she just went and checked in with Lucy who's holding the camera and then she comes back to me and I can reinforce that in a positive way and say well done that was the right thing to do. And the key with the positive reinforcement for Blondie is it's small amounts. And what I really notice is I'm getting better at waiting. So there when she eats the snack, she needs some time to process and I'm allowing her that. So what I'm aiming for in this clip is I am aiming for her to follow the tool around me. So she's going to like put herself onto that um, target. You saw there she had a big spook, but she quite quickly came back. And this is what's really, really nice to see. And what I haven't seen previously so easily with just the groundwork is that she doesn't find it so easy to come back down. Whereas when there is no force, there's nothing holding her with me, she's much more able to kind of, re-regulate herself so I am um, I had already done a little bit before this part and one thing I'm noticing looking back is everything looks a bit fast and I'd like things to be a little bit slower but I thought I'd try my luck and see if she would walk over a pole with me and the fact that she did do that is really really cool because previously she's had very negative associations with poles and not felt good and confident in herself so the fact that she was willing to come with me, I decided I wouldn't ask her to go around and over that pole. I thought I'd let her go past it. I had hoped to kind of pick her up again on the other side, but she had other ideas. And that's okay. And that's the key that I'm going with. That is okay. It's absolutely fine for her to go away from me and then to choose to come back. And what I'm saying here to Lucy is how cool is that? That she chooses to go away and that she chooses to come back rather than me holding her with me, maybe against her will. The fact that she is exploring these poles, thinking about the possibility of being close to them is really nice in itself. So I was really pleased with her actually on this day because for her to be around and in the arena and still feel so fluid and forward was a really, really nice session and a really nice feeling because we haven't felt that before and you can see it's not perfect that horse up that I worked previously in the video B she was really unsettled the whole yard and this is really common you know it's a bit like if you had one very anxious person then other people would feed off that it's the same thing and she's really struggling that horse B and you know although we make good suppression good progress in the sessions we have 
she is not like Blondie and she's not so different from Blondie, I suppose, because she suffers with anxiety, but maybe in different culminates in a different way. She screams her head off, whereas Blondie tends to go introverted and refuse to move forward. As you can see here, there's no refusal to move forward now. She's very keen and confident. She follows that pressure. She's very happy to do so. This was quite interesting. I was asking her to come back the other way over this pole and she just decides that actually, no, that's not so much what she wants to do. And I'm really having to learn that that's totally fine and that I can't control her in this way. I have to ask her these questions rather than expect her to give me an answer. And it's a learning for me as much as for her. The fact that she goes around, comes back to me, it's good enough for me, you know, I'm not so worried really at this point what it looks like. And I realise at this point that I have, you know, maybe pushed my luck, not pushed my luck, not got it wrong, but that I don't need to necessarily do any more. So this is a bit the fundamentals of what we're getting started with, following the pressure. Very good over the pole there. You can see she jogs over the pole and I think that is still just a bit of that tension. But there I decide that was really good. That was enough for me. Can I draw her again to me? Potentially not. Mm, one more. I think I do stop in a moment. You'll see me reel up my flag. So there I lose her and I decide, okay, this is good. The sound of me doing the flag was enough to send her a little bit fast. And then this is really interesting in a moment. So she's gone over to that tree. And then she thinks, oh, I probably should go over that way. She takes herself over the pole and she comes back to me. And I was very proud of her for that. It was a really cool moment. You couldn't stop me smiling after this point. And happy in the halter too. Good girl, Blondie. So we're just having a little snack of grass while Lucy goes and gets Dee Dee. Goodness, energy has come up a bit today. Definitely so interesting. The change in them all, just having that different horse on the yard is now a bit windy as well. Yes, she's coming. Oh gosh. And it is remarkable what one mare with a lot of hormones can do. This horse, B, her hormones are all over the place. So we're going to be giving her some hormone support. We're basically going to be treating her how I've treated Blondie. So gut balancer, hormone support, calcium, um, which is the Equifeast balancer. And hopefully we start to see her level off a bit, basically, because... Uh, yeah, it's hard work at the moment with everybody else feeling a bit wound up by it all. So far these guys have been quite unaffected, but this is the first time that first time that Blondie has definitely seemed a little bit more wound up by the whole thing. So we just have to manage our expectations and um hope the best basically. Um try and just not expect them all to be able to do as they did the day before basically you know sometimes when these things change and the horse is calm and it's complicated for them we can't expect them to do as well as they were, as they were doing the day before so we have to manage the expectation that we hold on them within their training and then it means that nobody gets upset because well they're horses at the end of the day if we're riding bicycles it might be a bit different mightn't it so this is Patsy's third time jumping fences. We start with a little pole on the floor, very mindful to stay supporting her body. So my leg and my hand stays very consistent. Young horses don't like to be dropped on a pole or a fence. You say I see I stay very consistent with her and then soften my hands over the fence or over the pole. And you see she jumps the pole, which is really nice, lands in canter. So you can see she's a little bit more advanced than Dee Dee was. And then we build it up, so we put one side up. So here we've just got one side up, and I'll do that a few times, both ways, both fences. So I've got it built up on both sides of the arena. And then we build up, and we jump a little cross pole. And as you can see, she's super confident, and she jumps that really, really nicely. And that's all I'll do with a horse of this age. 
So last one of the day for me, little Taz. Went out overnight last night, went out in the evening. We gave him a bit of time to settle in in his stable and then he went out in the evening with his friend Perry. So he uh, was a trekking pony, but he hasn't got really very much understanding of how to be a ridden pony in the school. And his default is to run off. So we are going to go and do some groundwork. I might not video the entire session, because I realize this video is going to be very, very long, but if you are interested in that kind of thing, again, you can see that kind of thing over on my online training platform. Meg is going to do some groundwork with Raven, the gray mare that I introduced you to earlier. And then I'm going to have a little lean over her potentially at the end. It's very, it's got quite windy and she's really, really sensitive. And we have been building up really positive experiences under saddle again. So potentially I won't video, I won't, sorry, I won't lean on her today. Um, we'll see how she goes. We'll see how she goes. Anyway, these are the last ones before lunch. And then I've got to shoot off for the afternoon. So yeah, I'll uh, show you some little clips of what we get up to with Taz. Overwinding. We talk about comfort though. I would say, him coming down here, he comfort and I know from what his owner has told me that he at their yard had a bit of a negative experience when he first went into the arena. He just like ran around and ran and ran and ran. Really? He was only on the lunge, so um, I'm very mindful that I don't want to let him get to that point. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to bring him in here and I'm just asking very small questions and when I see the edge of his comfort zone I'm going to back off a little bit so I'm starting to learn where his comfort zone ends and then I can create a positive experience for him not it end up becoming really heightened yeah make it easy for him exactly I could really end up like in a back <laughs> Ralph's acting dead so this is Raven. She's five this year. She's been back previously, but she had some really negative experiences. She jumped out of an arena and went through a fence and really panicked and yeah, didn't have didn't have a great time. So what we have been doing is re-giving her good experiences. And so this is one of the first times that I was leaning on her. So you, this is what I mean about having Meg guide the horse from the ground so Meg goes through the basic pattern so the stepping back and away and then the moving the hind leg around and what we get to do in this moment is we get to create a positive association where previously there maybe was a negative one now I don't know 100% what went on what the experiences were but by re-going through the backing process how I would do it I get to form new responses where potentially there previously were negative ones. So we move the body, we get to a place where she finds some softness in the steps. When we first did this, she would rush, 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 rush. The steps were fast and she didn't find any rest within them. She's not a very um, big horse. She's quite small and so my balance is an important thing for her. You can see I'm just moving myself around a little bit and then I'm sitting on board and there is absolutely zero negative association. Now, I've never seen a negative moment for this horse. I try and avoid seeing negative moments with any horse. But that was the first time that I was actually sat up and on her. And for me, that was a really positive moment because she didn't give me any negative feeling. And that's what I want to build on. I want to build positive on top of positive, And that's enough on this day. So that is all the horses worked. Um, Meg has got one more to groundwork later when uh, Zora gets hand walked again. Um, and that's it, all done. So it's lunchtime for these guys. And then I am dashing off to an appointment. Um, it's a random appointment. I'm having my nails done. I have consistently nice nails these days. And um, it's like part of my self-care routine and I really like it. it. Makes a big difference. I feel like a lady. So that's what I'm rushing off to do. I have by some miracle made it to my appointment on time um, to have my nails done. Oh, I've not put my handbrake on. Good job there was no car behind me. I thought my car had an automated handbrake. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to have my nails done. They're a bit grown out. Anyway, uh, so that's what I'm going to go and do. I'm in all my horsey gear though, so sorry guys. 
I smell like horse and I'm gonna go and try and get something very quickly to eat before I go in because I've got literally eight minutes anyway I've made it on time I don't I don't think I smell like horse <laughs> not much I can do about it now so here we go anyway hi everybody uh, so as you might be able to tell it's been a long while since I last filmed that last clip um, it's still the same day I got my nails done um, so unfortunately after I spoke to you guys last I had a phone call from Meg when I was just leaving the nail place and um, George's older horse Tilly who I used to jump was un like just suddenly very lame in the field uh, he's got an old stifle injury which is why he's now retired he's been retired for a little while uh, but he he just suddenly isn't doing very well and we went and caught him in from the field and uh, he has come in to a stable and um, yeah it's rubbish it's really rubbish because he's not very old he's only 15 and we are you know worried that maybe this is not going to be a very positive outcome uh, we'll give him he's had pain relief obviously and we are going to speak to the vet and see what he thinks but it's really difficult because he's although very bright in himself and definitely not very kind of old in himself his body is very old and so we may have to make a difficult decision um had to make a difficult decision with my older horse nanette last year and it was really hard because again you know you kind of want them to live forever right and they just can't um she got colic it was slightly different you know the decision was made for me as such but it's just one of those things um and so yeah so comes the kind of highs and lows of horses you know we have the highs of jumping four-year-old Dee Dee and getting to that place and doing that exciting thing and seeing that progress with Blondie and doing that work with her free in the arena and jumping Belle and you know backing those young horses and starting their careers and helping those horses that suffer with separation anxiety and that struggle so much and then you have that full circle of seeing a really older you know an older horse that maybe is coming to the end of his life it's a real it's a real kind of balance i guess and that's i think the reality of horses you know it's it's not often just positive is it it's so so commonly quite negative actually i've had a couple of friends lose horses recently and it just never gets easier it's just a devastating part of it and i've always really struggled with that part of it you know kind of playing god as such you know having to have horses put to sleep because it's the kindest thing to do because their body has given up or people haven't cared for them the right way beforehand and it's just it's exhausting that part of it and it's it's so so hard to balance between the good and the not so good um and maybe this is a topic that i'll talk about another day you know the importance of understanding what how the process goes when you have to have a horse put to sleep um but anyway i don't want to be too much of a debbie downer we don't know where we are yet on that situation with tilly uh but he is he he is older and we are unsure of how much longer he'll be able to be a field ornament for which is really tough but um i have despite this sad moment uh enjoyed sharing my day with you guys if you've made it this far congratulations you're pretty committed um it's like a feature length movie by this point i reckon um yeah i think i've, I've said everything that i want to say i hope that you enjoyed this video if there's anything that you'd like me to talk about on my youtube channel please do let me know you know anything educational or anything along those lines if uh, you do want more like tutorial content then please do head over to my website or my online training platform on patreon loads of stuff on there to learn about how I train the horses and see the full sessions that we went through today. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was an interesting video and I guess I'll just see you guys for next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing those cool moments with me today and yeah, bye for now.